Hello everybody, welcome back. Welcome to ACE Engineering Academy and ACE Online Platform. So myself, Prasad Mehkavarna. So today, here we are to discuss about the utilization of electrical energy concept. So as a part of uh, TSPSC Polytechnic Lectures course. Right students? <clears throat> so today we are going to discuss about the preparation strategy and the important question analysis for utilization of electrical energy students. Right? So now, so first of all, whenever you are going for utilization of electrical energy, so the first point that you have to learn here it is, what is the actual syllabus of entire power system? The entire syllabus of entire power system is the generation of electrical energy, transmission and distribution of electrical energy, power system analysis and switch gear and protection along with economic load dispatch and load frequency control and finally, utilization of electrical energy, utilization of electrical energy. So today we are going to discuss about the utilization of electrical energy concept here. Right students? Now, so what is the syllabus given by the TSPSC unit? So this is the actual syllabus given. So high frequency eddy currents, high frequency eddy current heating and dielectric heating. So that means the types of heating they have given and arc furnaces and electric arc welding, right? And again they are given about the weldings and electric resistance welding and arc weldings and concepts of illumination they have given. So in the illumination, loss of illumination they have given. And so, so mass spherical candle power they have given and sodium vapor lamps and mercury vapor lamps and factory and street flood lightning, uh, lighting and electric traction and so track electrification concepts and speed time cows, so tractive efforts, right? So huge syllabus about the uh, utilization of electrical energy and uh, specific energy consumption and the mechanism of train movement, adhesive weight and coefficient of adhesion and DC motor operations, right? Parallel operations. So these are the concepts they have given, right? So as a part of utilization of electrical energy students. So actually, so only in this uh, uh, utilization of electrical energy, so in the last, uh, so three to four years if you see, the exams uh, conducted by several states, they are concentrating more on the utilization of electrical energy so that we can expect at least so 8 to 10 marks. 8 to 10 marks, right? We can expect 8 to 10 marks from utilization of electrical energy students. So only from utilization of electrical energy, we can expect 8 to 10 marks, right? So, so this is the actual syllabus given by the TSPSC. So now we can see how can we frame that one. So we can take those into four different chapters. So electric uh, heating we can see. So in that various types of heatings and electric welding, right? So various types of welding, right? Illumination loss and the lamps, all those things we will discuss in the illumination and traction, traction. So these are the concepts, right? So only in electric heating, so everywhere we can expect only in electric heating we can expect two marks, at least, at least a minimum of two marks we can expect. And in electric welding also we can expect two marks, right? And whereas, so these two carries more number of marks here, minimum, these are minimum, right? So here we can expect, so five to six marks, five to six marks. in case of illumination and the traction, right? So, so we are having huge syllabus in uh, heating, welding and illumination and uh, traction and the weightage is also somewhat more, clear students? So now we'll see, so what are the textbooks we can prefer for this one? So for uh, utilization of electrical energy, so we are having one of the best textbook uh, by CL Vadva and uh, Siva Nagaraju also, right? So we can take generation, so distribution and utilization of electrical energy and generation and utilization of electrical energy by so Sivanagaraju we can take and CL Vadva also we can take students. So these two textbooks are having along with the theory concept they are having huge number of practice questions so at the end of each chapter so we can practice those questions also clear. So after completion of welding we can practice some questions, after completion of traction we can complete some questions like that. That is the most important thing that you have to do in case of utilization of electrical energy students, right? So these textbooks not only covering the theory 
So they are asking the questions, right? So very uh, that is wide number of questions are there. So we can practice more number of questions. Clear, right? So better to take the two textbooks, right? And practice more number of questions. Why? Because we are having more weightage here. So we are having as more weightage is there. So we can practice more number of questions. Clear? Now, so what do you have to practice actually? So so we are not having utilization of electrical energy in the gate. And in uh, engineering services also, we are having less weightage. We are having utilization of electrical energy, but very less times they are asking uh, the questions from utilization of electrical energy. We cannot expect uh, more number of questions uh, from utilization of electrical energy for in, in engineering services. But where we will get more number of questions, right? So we can take uh, previous state board questions. So TSPSC, so our APPSC, our MPSC, like uh, different states are there. So please collect those questions. So try to practice them. Clear? And previous SSCJE. In SSCJE and RRBJE, utilization of electrical energy is one of the major important subject. So they are majorly concentrating on those concepts. Right? So in particularly RRBJE, so, so in traction system related questions, they are asking more, more. Right? And textbook practice questions. So these are the textbooks we have taken. So from these two textbooks, practice more number of questions. Clear students? So this is the practice set we have to maintain every time I am saying. So what is the practice set that you have to maintain and collect those questions, listen the classes carefully and practice them clearly. Clear right? So after uh, preparing the concepts, right? So we have to go for more question practice, more question practice. So how many questions you are going to practice? So you are going to reach your goal so that much uh, faster, right? So now first question we are going here. So it is in the uh, heating. So unit of coefficient of thermal conductivity. So what is the unit of coefficient of thermal conductivity? So what about thermal conductivity? So an element, whatever the element that you are going to take, that element, the heating element should have high thermal conductivity. So whenever the element is having high thermal conductivity, it can transfer the heat from one location to the other location so that it will be having high melting point high melting point, right? So thermal conductivity is, should be very high and because of that one, it can withstand more temperatures so that the melting point will be very high. And they are asking what is the coefficient of, uh, the unit of coefficient of thermal conductivity. So the unit of coefficient of thermal conductivity will be, so mega joules per meter cube per degree centigrade per hour, per hour. That is the unit uh, of coefficient of thermal conductivity. Right? And what is the unit of thermal conductivity? What is the unit of thermal conductivity? The unit of thermal conductivity, it is watts per meter Kelvin. Watts per meter Kelvin. That is the unit of thermal conductivity. So try to remember the units also. So they are asking the questions related to units also in the utilization of electrical energy students. So this is the first question students. So the unit of coefficient of thermal conductivity will be mega joules per meter cube per degree centigrade per hour. Right students? So for every heating element, right, or for every electrical heating element, so it should have high thermal conductivity. It should have high thermal conductivity. High thermal conductivity. So whenever you are having high thermal conductivity, High thermal conductivity will lead to, high thermal conductivity will lead to, right? So high temperature withstanding capability. High temperature, high temperature withstanding, withstanding capability. So because of this one, it will be having high melting point, high melting point. Clear students? So these are the units and the properties that you have to maintain for that heating element. Clear students? So we'll go for the next question here. So try to see the next question. So which of the following heating element can give the highest temperature in resistance heating? So which of the following heating element can give the highest temperature in resistance heating? So actually, 
in case of resistance heating from the options we can give one answer actually in case of resistance heating so the element tungsten right it will give the highest amount of heating right so that the highest amount of uh, heat right the temperature that can be provided by tungsten will be very high right so the temperature that is provided by tungsten will be very high and later on that one we are having a silicon carbide silicon carbide so le later on that one later on that one we are having so the nickel chromium ferrous alloy right so nickel chromium ferrous alloy we can call it as kanthal kanthal right and beyond that one we are having the nichrome nichrome right we are having that one so that from the given options we can say so silicon carbide silicon carbide is the better option in case of resistance heating right so what they are asking which of the following heating element can give the highest temperature in resistance heating right so from the options we can give it is silicon carbide but actually so tungsten if you are having tungsten in the options so you can go for tungsten clear so after that silicon carbide after that we are having kanthal kanthal means what nickel chromium ferrous alloy nickel chromium ferrous alloy we are calling it as kanthal kanthal right so after that we are having nichrome nickel plus chromium we are having nichrome nichrome clear students so try to remember this uh, list also so they can ask right so any uh, based on suppose if they, uh, if they have not given uh, silicon carbide in the options we have to go for next element kanthal clear right so we'll go for the next question here the heat transfers from source to the substance to be heated without heating the medium in between right so the heat transfers from source to the substance source to the substance so to be heated without heating the medium in between without medium the heating in between so that is called as what so we are having conduction convection and radiation right so conduction conduction right so conduction means so it is transferring the heat from one location to the other location without moving the elements in between without moving the molecules in between so in between molecules are not at all moved so in case of conduction but whereas in convection part right the heat can be transferred from one location to the other location so by moving of the molecules by moving of the molecules but whereas in case of radiation the heat can be transferred from source to the substances to be heated so without heating in between in between process is not at all heated so but we can transfer the heat from one location to the other location that is called as radiation that is called as radiation right so try to remember so what is conduction what is convection and what is radiation the definitions and the examples also and the examples also so by using conduction so which elements can be used so by using convection which elements can be used by using radiation so which elements can be used right so radiation process can be used in which type of uh, metals right so conduction process can be used in which type of metals and convection process can be used in which type of metals all those they are asking actually clear students so the, that is the next question we are having in the electric heating and the next one we can see the next question heat is transferred simultaneously by conduction convection and radiation so first of all first will be conduction and then convection and then radiation so in which it is going to happen so if you see so during the melting of ice or so from refrigerator coils to the refrigerator freezer or so inside boiler furnaces or through the surface of the insulated pipe carrying steam carrying steam so heat can be transferred simultaneously so by conduction convection and radiation so that will be given so it is inside the boiler furnaces inside the boiler furnaces so the heat can be converted so by sequence of conduction convection uh, convection and radiation clear students so try to remember all these things so now i'll go for the next question here which of the following is not an not essential requirement of good heating element which of the following is not uh, essential requirement of good heating element so the essential requirements of heating elements are so they should have high dielectric resistance yes they should have high dielectric resistance right 
and they should have high melting point definitely they should have high melting point definition definitely they should have high mechanical strength high mechanical strength and they should have low temperature coefficient why because the variation of resistance from so one temperature to the other temperature should be not that much very high right so that's why so you should have low temperature coefficient right so what should it show it should have low temperature coefficient coefficient so where is that r2 is equal to r1 into 1 plus alpha into t2 minus t1 so where alpha is called as the temperature coefficient and that should be very low so even though the temperature is very high changing so whenever alpha is chosen that 0 0.0001 like that so even though if you are having high temperature variations there is no much variation in the resistance of the heating element so because of that one so it needs low temperature coefficient and high dielectric resistance to avoid the leakage currents and high melting point right and high mechanical strength right so these are the points that you can remember from this one and the next question students so try to understand the next question here so the method of heating employed in immersion water heater uh, what is the method of heating so is it in the immersion water heater right so for this one for this one i will give a table so try to remember that table the applications of that uh, heat, heating elements and finally we can give the answers right so just see the table whatever we are having here so so before that uh, so i'm going to give you so the classification of this heating so electrical heating is power frequency heating and high frequency heating right so under power frequency so the 50 hertz frequency and uh, at very high frequencies we are going to do this and in case of power frequency we are having resistance heating so in that resistance heating direct resistance heating indirect resistance heating and infrared or radiant heating are there and in case of arc heating so direct arc heating and indirect arc, arc heating are the methods and so election bombardment heating also is there one of the method of power frequency and whereas high frequency heatings so the high frequency heatings are induction heating and dielectric heating and in induction heating so direct induction heating and indirect uh, indirect direct uh, induction heating are the methods we are having so these are the classification of or the types of heating types of electric heating we are having students now now from this one we can see the applications the applications so type of heating and applications so try to remember this table so whenever you are having a direct resistance heating the direct resistance heating is used for so heating of electrode boiler right it is normally employed in the electrode boiler and indirect resistance heating so indirect resistance heating is used for heating of immersion water heaters so in case of immersion water heaters so we are going to use so indirect resistance heating indirect resistance heating and infrared or radiant heating infrared or radiant heating so that is used for drying of clothes in the textile industries right or to dry the wet paints wet paints on an, on an object right so you are having an object so on that object so if you want to dry that wet paints wet paints without any damage so we can go for this uh, radiant or infrared heating clear students and for immersion water heater we are going to use indirect uh, resistance heating and the direct arc heating the direct arc heating we are going to use for in the case of production of steel production of steel right so remember this one this is also one of the most important bit so in case of production of steel so which type of heating we can use right that will be direct arc heating direct arc heating and in case of indirect arc heating indirect arc heating is melting of non ferrous materials non ferrous materials so the indirect arc heating is used for melting of non ferrous materials and so direct induction heating so that is used for melt the charge in induction furnaces so to melt the charge so in the induction furnaces we are going to use the direct induction heating and indirect induction heating so that is used for induction furnaces used for the heat treatment of metals so in case of heat treatment of metals it is one of the most important bit so try to remember 
So that is indirect uh, induction heating, indirect induction heating. It is one of the previous question. So which of the following heating is uh, preferred for heat treatment of metals, right? That is indirect induction heating. And dielectric heating, so the dielectric heating is used for preheating of plastic perfumes and baking foundry cores, right? Baking foundry cores. So we are going to use. So these are the types of heating and their application students. So try to remember this table. So one of the most important one. Clear students? So from this one, we can expect uh, one question. So for, if you remember this table, so we can expect one question from this table itself. Clear students? Now, so we are having a question here. The method of heating employed in immersion water heater is. So what is the method that is employed in the immersion water heater? Now, what is that? Indirect resistance heating. Indirect resistance heating. Indirect resistance heating is always preferred in the uh, immersion water heaters. Now, what is the method used for production of steel? Production of steel, right? What is that? So, uh, just here, production of steel. So, direct arc heating, right? And what is the method used for heat treatment of metals? That is the uh, indirect induction heating, right? So, what is the method uh, used in the electrode boiler? What is that? Direct resistance heating direct resistance heating. So try to remember, right? So melting of non-ferrous materials. So it is the indirect arc heating, indirect arc heating. Ah. Next, we will go for weldings, weldings. So butt welding is a type of, butt welding is a type of, which type of heating it is? So butt welding is a type of what? Is it a resistance welding or arc welding or it is a helium welding or it is a spot welding? Spot welding. Just see the classification. So, we will see the classification based on that one. So, we can see that. Uh, actually, so this is the classification of welding we are having. So, here we are having. So, the electric welding will be resistance welding or arc welding. So, in resistance welding, we are having four major types. What are those? So, spot welding, seam welding, projection welding and butt welding. Spot welding, seam welding, projection welding and butt welding. In butt, we are having a, a, some more types. It is upset butt and flash butt. Upset butt and flash butt type of weldings. And in case of arc welding, so we are having so metal, metal arc welding and carbon arc welding, atomic hydrogen arc welding and helium or argon welding. Helium or argon welding. So metal arc welding, carbon arc welding, atomic hydrogen welding and helium or argon arc welding. Right? These are the types of arc weldings we are having. What they have asked the question? So, butt welding is a type of what? Resistance welding. Butt welding is a type of resistance welding. Like that they may ask, right? So, helium welding. Helium welding is a type of what? It is a arc type of welding. Arc type of welding. And flash butt welding is a type of what? Flash butt welding is a type of resistance welding. Resistance welding only. Seam welding and spot welding and projection welding, all these are the types of the resistance welding. So try to remember, it's one of the basic question, one of the basic question. So it is the resistance welding students. Clear everybody? Right. So now we'll go for the next question here. So try to see the next question. Ah. Seam welding is used uh, uh, majorly, uh, widely used for where you are going to use the seam welding. So, option A, so automatic welding process for joining automobile parts or joining fabricating sheet metal structures or it is used for welding of pressure tanks, transformers, condensers, evaporators, aircraft tanks, refrigerators or varnished containers. Right? So, these are the applications or mass production work or that is welding of refrigerators, condensers, uh, crossed wire weldings or refrigerated racks or grills and welding of rods, pipes and wires and for joining metal parts end to end, right? So these are the given applications. So now see here, seam welding, seam welding is used for welding of transformers or pressure tanks or condensers. So we are using the seam welding application here, clear? So I will give you the detailed application. So so for this one, so automatic welding process, so we are going to use the spot welding and so for transformers we are going to use the seam welding, 
for mass production work we are going to use the uh, projection welding and welding of rods we are going to use the butt welding right so you can see that you can see that in the table so spot welding is automatic welding process right so for joining automobile parts joining and fabrication sheet metal structures we are going to use and the next one is seam welding the seam welding is used for welding of pressure tanks of transformers condensers and evaporators aircraft tanks and projection welding so the projection welding is employed for mass production work that is welding of refrigerators condensers crossed wire weldings and refrigerator tanks grills etc right and butt welding so butt welding is used for welding of rods pipes and wires and for joining metal parts end to end right so try to remember the application students for example if they are asking which, which of the following type of uh, uh, welding is used for welding of rods and pipes right we can go for the butt welding so which of the following uh, uh, weld uh, type of welding is used for uh, transformers welding of transformers we can go for seam welding right so condensers crossed wire weldings refrigerator racks right so here we are going to use refrigerators here it is refrigerator racks and grills so we are going to use the projection type of welding students right so try to remember the type of welding and the type of applications so here so in this question they are asking about seam welding so seam welding is used for welding of process pressure tanks and transformers like that we are having the applications clear so here so in case of welding so we can expect a question from the classification or we can expect a question from the applications applications right right the next question so the differences between what are the differences between the resistance heating and uh, resistance welding and arc welding resistance welding and arc welding so in case of the resistance welding and arc welding students right so here the source of supply is ac only right so i'll see so uh, any students are commenting here so just go through that comments just go through that comments so let us see uh, those students who are uh, responding here చూడండి అమ్మా ఆన్సర్స్ క్లియర్గా ఇవ్వండి ఒకసారి సో ఒకసారి మీరు సో మనం ఎలా డిస్కస్ చేసాము రైట్ రైట్ సో స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆర్ రెస్పాండింగ్ హ్యావ్ నాట్ ఐ ఫర్గాట్ అబౌట్ వాచింగ్ ద కామెంట్స్ యర్ వెరీ గుడ్ వెరీ గుడ్ సో అనిత వెంకటేశ్వర్లు ప్రేమ్ సాగర్ మహేష్ రైట్ so i have given the options perfectly right yes 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 durga prasad chari right there are lot of applications right there are lot of applications right 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 so that you have to con uh, concentrate so where we have to give right students ah just see the differences between the differences between the resistance welding and arc welding so in case of the resistance welding the source of supply is ac only but whereas in case of arc welding so it can be used for both uh, so ac and dc the source of supply right so so which type of welding is used for only for ac applications means we can go for resistance welding and so the type of welding which can be used for both ac and dc applications that will be arc type of welding now whereas in case of resistance welding the heat developed is mainly due to the mainly due to the flow of contact resistance right anta kada amma so meer chudala resistance welding anedi so resistance welding lo heat anedi ela develop avutundi so arc resistance valla right so flow of uh, mainly due to flow of uh, contact resistance right Uh, whereas in case of arc welding arc welding at the heat developed is mainly due to the 
striking of arc between the electrodes. So, between the two electrodes, if you have arc, you can develop the heat and develop it. Clear, right? And then, we have the arc process to do the protection of the circuit breaker open heat. So, heat and develop it. Right? And then, we have so, the temperature attained by the workpiece is not that much high in case of resistance heating. So, resistance heating low, anta temperature on the low, but whereas in case of arc, arc, arc welding low, so we are having a, so more temperature, right. And in case of resistance welding, so external pressure is required, we need, so one of external pressure echo ga kawal sustin, but whereas ikkada anta ka external pressure avasar mundadu, right. So, not external pressure, right, no external pressure is required, right. And we can say, so the welding equipment is very simple, right. So, in case of arc welding low, the welding equipment is very simple, but whereas resistance welding low, so it is more compact in size. So, in case of resistance welding, the filler material is not required to join two metal pieces, but whereas here, so the suitable filler materials, filler electrodes are required, right. So, two elements in join jail and resistance welding low. So, there is no need of any filler materials, but whereas in case of arc welding, arc welding like that we need so filler materials, right. So, that resistance welding and the uh, repair work key, repairing work key use out, but whereas arc welding and the so repairing work key use out, right. So, but it is used for mass production. So, so new ga construct jese, okay, complete production key. So, we can go for the resistance welding. But whereas arc welding and mass production uh, set up, but it can be go for, it can be used for the welding of that is uh, two separate parts, right. So, and repair work. So, here the power consumption is low and here it will be very high. And operating power factor in case of resistance welding and so chala takku And whereas in case of arc welding, the operating power factor will be somewhat very high, right. So, in case of resistance uh, welding, so, bar, roller or flat type of electrodes use just now, but whereas in case of the arc welding, so bar coat or coated electrodes we are using, right. So, tables are very important, amma. so our tables are very important, at least one point and one chance to clear, right. So, we have to so these differences are very important, so not only this table, this table is already some tables discussed just now, so this is the table, clear, right, applications point. Right? And already in the mundo table good use now, such chairs condi applications. Ecad applications we type of heating applications. Aravatna. So okay table in chief question of China's almanac. Aravatna. Right. Ah, next one. So we'll go for illumination. E table of Kachitango question of the one. E table of Kachitango question of the illumination law. Aravatna. So, illumination law, units base me the every year, you have utilization me the question paper check jayasar ante, kachchi thanga units me the one question hai thoon tada. Ardha na? So, nenu one question me the one topic me the one question frame jayo daan kante koda, so directly ka table is the best one to the next table is just the manakala. Ardha na? Right. So, luminous intensity, ah, luminous intensity, so what are the units? Lumen second. So, luminous intensity ke what are the units? Lumen second. And, Luminous flux or luminous power keep. Luminous flux or luminous power. Lumen. Lumen. Right? So, luminous intensity. Luminous intensity, the unit is candela. Unit is candela. Right? So, recently there is an example of lux. So, lux is the unit of what? Is it unit of luminance or is the unit of illuminance? Luminous intensity ka lezante. So, uh, luminous flux ka. Clear right? Ah, next one. So, what is illuminance? The unit of illuminance is lux, right? And luminous emittance. So, luminous emittance guda, the unit is lux. And whereas luminous exposure. So, luminous exposure. So, the unit is lux second. Lux second. Clear students? So, so these are the quantities and these are the units that you have to remember students. Clear? So, try to remember the units and the quantities. So, e table ninchi mana kachitanga waka question aita uchi chance utta. Clear students? Right. So, now we will go for the next one. Ah, ikkada guda. So, colors, colors lo guda mana question uchi chance utta ma. Right. So, yeah, PDF kawala, pumpis tanama, miru na mail in the gada, ma mail ichu nanagadama mi kaladi.
what is the my mail so power systems dot prasad at 2010 at gmail dot com so a uh, mail kok sari miru link patamani uh, uh, mail message vettandi so that uh, we can we can send right hmm. so now see here put you down e table nunchi a question mir expect jayach e table nunchi what is the color what is the color which is having highest wavelength what is the color which is having the highest wavelength right so infrared red orange yellow green blue violet ah, what is the color which is having the lowest wavelength lowest wavelength right so violet blue green yellow orange red infrared clear right what is the color which is having the highest sensitivity what is the color which is having which is having the lowest sensitivity lowest sensitivity ala adutar questions ardhamatna ante okka sari ala table chuste enni questions mana frame chesukochu chudandi ardhamatna what is the color which is having the highest wavelength red gaani ledante meeku infrared gaani so meeru meer chudandi red ivachu ivakapochu options lo meeku orange yellow green blue ani ichu options lo ardhamatna meer red okate gurtu pettukunte saripothundi ganukunte kudaradu endukante red options lane ivaru is it clear what is the color which is having the highest wavelength and jeppi make orange yellow green blue is the options so that orange Arrhavatna. so what is the color which is having highest sensitivity highest sensitivity a color kundama so mirchu sir ante highest sensitivity vachi meeku undadi green green clear right the color which is having the highest sensitivity is green so next highest ever kundama blue blue next highest so yellow and then orange and then violet and then red and then infrared ila untai right so meer uh, eppudaithe so ee uh, graph variation of wavelength uh, with sensitivity eppudaithe chustaro so meer some questions meer frame chesukochu easy ga clear right right green highest very good very good right students so now we'll go for the next one now we'll go for the next one so meeku illumination lonchi meer question expert chesthe ikkada nunchi oka question expert cheyochu Definitely. Next, one question expert J. Next, types of bulbs, what applications? Types of bulbs, what, what applications? Launch it out. Next, so, so two theories of illumination, right? So, two, two theories of illumination. So, two theories, Miru, Chadu calls us. Inverse square law, right? So, uh, uh, two theories, Miru, uh, Chadu calls us. Clear, right? Now, so what are the types of lamps? Types of lamps and applications, right? So, neon discharge lamp next sodium vapor lamp mercury vapor lamp right and carbon arc lamp carbon arc lamp right so what applications ah, neon discharge lamp ekkada vaartunamma neon discharge lamp is used as night lamps meeku previous lo last time oka question adigaramma ah, what is the lamp that is used in camera projector what is the lamp that is used in the camera projector camera uh, cinema projector or camera projector lo vaade so lamp edi so what is that carbon arc lamp carbon arc lamp ardavatna so ala adigaru so so neon discharge lamps night lamps ga gaani right indicator lamps ga indicator lamps ga right so indicator lamps ga vadachu and for determination of the polarity of dc mains for advertising purpose so advertising purpose kuda manu neon discharge lamps vadachu and street lighting ki lamp vadtaru street lighting ki so sodium vapor lamp vadachu right so used for highway and street lightings parks railway yards and general outdoor lightings general outdoor lightings so mercury vapor lamps industrial lighting ports shopping centers railway yards mercury vapor lamps so cinema projectors search lights and flash cameras flash cameras we are going to use carbon arc lamp carbon arc lamp so ee applications nunchi manaku ok question vache chance undi ante meeku sir meeku ikkada question ikkada question ఇక్కడ క్వశ్చన్ త్రీ క్వశ్చన్స్ వస్తాయా అంటే రావచ్చు రాకపోవచ్చు చెప్పలేము అర్థమవుతుందా మీరు టేబుల్ చూసుకెళ్తే చాలా ఈజీగా క్వశ్చన్ ఆన్సర్ చేసే ఛాన్స్ ఉంటుంది అర్థమవుతుందా మనము ఎలిమినేషన్ నుంచి ట్రాక్షన్ నుంచి అప్రాక్సిమేట్గా సిక్స్ క్వశ్చన్స్ అనుకుంటున్నాం సో సిక్స్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఒకసారి ట్రాక్షన్లోనే అడగచ్చు సిక్స్ క్వశ్చన్స్ ఒకసారి ఎలిమినేషన్లోనే అడగచ్చు ఓకేనా వాళ్ళ ఇష్టం అది అర్థమవుతున్నా స్టూడెంట్స్ రైట్ సో నవ్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ ద ట్రాక్షన్ పాయింట్స్ సో ఈ ట్రాక్షన్ నుంచి మనము సో ఈ గ్రాఫ్ ఈ గ్రాఫ్ ఏదైతే గ్రాఫ్ ఉందో సో ఈ గ్రాఫ్ చూసుకోవాలి బాగా సో హియర్ వీఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ సో కాన్స్టెంట్ యాక్సలరేషన్ ఉండే జోన్ ఎక్కడి నుంచి ఎక్కడి వరకు ఉంటుంది నెక్స్ట్ సో 
వేరియబుల్ యాక్సలరేషన్ ఎక్కడ ఉంటుంది నెక్స్ట్ ఫ్రీ రన్నింగ్ యాక్సలరేషన్ ఎక్కడ ఉంటుంది నెక్స్ట్ కోస్టింగ్ నెక్స్ట్ బ్రేకింగ్ సో క్వశ్చన్ ఎలా అడుగుతాడు అంటే వాట్ ఈస్ ద పీరియడ్ దట్ విల్ కమ్ ఆఫ్టర్ ఫ్రీ రన్నింగ్ ఫ్రీ రన్నింగ్ సో ఫ్రీ రన్నింగ్ తర్వాత వచ్చే పీరియడ్ అమ్మా కోస్టింగ్ రైట్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ ద పీరియడ్ దట్ విల్ కమ్ బిఫోర్ కోస్టింగ్ కోస్టింగ్ ముందు వచ్చే పీరియడ్ ఏది ఫ్రీ రన్నింగ్ రైట్ సో నెక్స్ట్ అలా సో ఏ పీరియడ్స్ మీరు ఖచ్చితంగా ఈ గ్రాఫ్ అనేది గుర్తుపెట్టుకోవాలి సో సో టైమ్స్ స్పీడ్ టైమ్ క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్స్ ఆఫ్ ద ట్రాక్షన్ సిస్టమ్ సో సో కాన్స్టెంట్ యాక్సలరేషన్ ఎక్కడ ఉంది నెక్స్ట్ సో యాక్సలరేషన్ ఆన్ స్పీడ్ కర్వ్ ఎక్కడ ఉంది ఫ్రీ రన్నింగ్ ఎక్కడ ఉంది కోస్టింగ్ ఎక్కడ ఉంది బ్రేకింగ్ ఎక్కడ ఉంది సో ఇవన్నీ చెక్ చేసుకోవాలి రైట్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ వెరీ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ దీస్ ఆర్ వెరీ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ నౌ సో ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ వన్ వీ కెన్ టేక్ ఫ్రమ్ దిస్ వన్ వీ కెన్ టేక్ ఎ క్వశ్చన్ హియర్ ట్రెపజాడల్ స్పీడ్ టైమ్ కరు పై టైమ్స్ టూ ట్రెపజాడల్ స్పీడ్ టైమ్ కరు పై టైమ్స్ టూ ట్రెపజాడల్ స్పీడ్ టైమ్ కరు ఎక్కడ ఉంటుందమ్మా ట్రెపజాడల్ స్పీడ్ టైమ్ కరు ట్రెపజాడల్ స్పీడ్ టైమ్ కరు ఎనీ ఆన్సర్ వేర్ వీ కెన్ హ్యావ్ ద ట్రెపజాడల్ స్పీడ్ టైమ్ కరు ఎనీ ఆన్సర్స్ అనిత వెంకీ దుర్గాప్రసాద్ వెంకటేశ్వర్లు మహేష్ ఉపేందర్ ఆప్షన్ ఏ ఆప్షన్ ఏ ఆప్షన్ ఏ రైట్ సో దట్ ఈస్ ఇన్ ద మెయిన్ లైన్ సర్వీసెస్ ఎస్ సో దట్ ఈస్ ట్రెపజాడల్ స్పీడ్ టైమ్ కాస్ వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు యూజ్ ఇన్ ద మెయిన్ లైన్ సర్వీసెస్ సో ఇన్ కేస్ ఆఫ్ మెయిన్ లైన్ సర్వీసెస్ సో ద కోస్టింగ్ పీరియడ్ అండ్ ద సో వీ కెన్ సే ద కోస్టింగ్ పీరియడ్ అండ్ సో దిస్ యాక్సలరేషన్ పీరియడ్ విల్ బి లెస్ సో దిస్ పీరియడ్ అండ్ దిస్ పీరియడ్ విల్ బి రెడ్యూస్డ్ అండ్ వీఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ కాన్స్టెంట్ యాక్సలరేషన్ అండ్ ఫ్రీ రన్నింగ్ అండ్ బ్రేకింగ్ ఫ్రీ రన్నింగ్ అండ్ బ్రేకింగ్ సో ఇన్ కేస్ ఆఫ్ మెయిన్ లైన్ సర్వీసెస్ సో వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు హ్యావ్ లెస్ టైమ్ లెస్ టైమ్ ఫర్ ద స్టాపింగ్స్ సో యాజ్ వీఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ లెస్ టైమ్ ఫర్ ద స్టాపింగ్స్ వీఆర్ నాట్ గోయింగ్ టు సో యాక్సలరేషన్ ఆన్స్ so this car and this car will not be existed in the main line services right and if you go for the quadrilateral speed time car so the quadrilateral speed time car is the close approximation for so where we are having the quadrilateral speed time car yes 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 for urban and suburban services it is preferred for urban and suburban services clear everybody so where you are having the quadrilateral speed time curve so durga prasad given it is urban and suburban services and any other answers from the students yes c uday kiran so it will be c venkateswar lo it will be so not only suburban services it will be both urban and suburban services we are using the quadrilateral speed time curve characteristics clear students so this is the option కరెక్ట్ ఆప్షన్ వీఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ సో ఇఫ్ యూ సీ క్లియర్లీ సో వాట్ హ్యావ్ డిస్కస్డ్ హియర్ ఫ్రమ్ ద స్టార్టింగ్ సో హియర్ ద మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్ ఇన్ కేస్ ఆఫ్ ద హీటింగ్ ఇన్ కేస్ ఆఫ్ ద హీటింగ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ సో జస్ట్ చెక్ హియర్ ఇన్ కేస్ ఆఫ్ ద హీటింగ్ ద మోస్ట్ ఇంపార్టెంట్ థింగ్స్ ఆర్ ద యూనిట్స్ ఆర్ ద యూనిట్స్ ద యూనిట్స్ ఆఫ్ ద coefficient of thermal conductivity and the unit of thermal conductivity so these are the most important things clear right and next one is the heating metals what are the materials that you can use for heating so nichrome is there kanthal is there right so silicon carb silicon carbide copper tungsten right these are the elements we are going to have so these elements where we are going to use right so those their uh, temperature ratings what is temperature ratings kavali right so సో వాటి పర్సంటేజెస్ కూడా నిక్ నైక్రోమ్లో నికెల్ పర్సంటేజ్ ఎంత క్రోమియం పర్సంటేజ్ ఎంత సో అవన్నీ అవన్నీ చూసుకోవాలమ్మా మీరు ఒకసారి క్లియర్ రైట్ నెక్స్ట్ సో వాట్ ఈస్ కండక్షన్ అంటే ఏంది కన్వెక్షన్ అంటే ఏంది రేడియేషన్ అంటే ఏంది సో ఆ డెఫినేషన్స్ చూసుకోవాలి సో చాలా చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ ఆ డెఫినేషన్స్ సో నెక్స్ట్ వచ్చి సో హీట్ ఈస్ ట్రాన్స్ఫర్డ్ సైమల్టేనియస్లీ అంటే సో చూడండి సో బాయిలర్ ఫర్నేసెస్లో ఎటువంటి టైప్ ఆఫ్ వాడతాము మెల్టింగ్ ఆఫ్ ఐస్ దగ్గర ఎలా ఉంటుంది ప్రాసెస్ నెక్స్ట్ రెఫ్రిజిరేటర్లో ప్రాసెస్ ఎలా ఉంటుంది నెక్స్ట్ సో ఇన్సులేటెడ్ పైప్ క్యారింగ్ స్టీమ్ రైట్ సో అక్కడ ఎటువంటి ప్రాసెస్ ఉంటాయి సో ఇవన్నీ చెక్ చేసుకోవాలి అర్థమవుతుందా సో అందువల్ల మీకు ఈ టేబుల్స్ ఇవ్వడం జరిగింది ఇక్కడ 
అర్థమవుతుందా సో ఇది క్లాసిఫికేషన్ టేబుల్ నెక్స్ట్ ఇది అప్లికేషన్స్ టేబుల్ అప్లికేషన్స్ టేబుల్ అంతేనా సో నెక్స్ట్ వచ్చి నెక్స్ట్ వచ్చి వెల్డింగ్ సో వెల్డింగ్ క్లాసిఫికేషన్ వెల్డింగ్ క్లాసిఫికేషన్ అండ్ వెల్డింగ్ అప్లికేషన్స్ వెల్డింగ్ అప్లికేషన్స్ ఓకేనా నేను ఇక్కడ రెసిస్టెన్స్ వెల్డింగ్ మాత్రమే ఇచ్చానమ్మా మీరు ఆర్క్ వెల్డింగ్ కూడా తీసుకోవాలి ఆర్క్ వెల్డింగ్లో చాలా టైప్స్ ఉన్నాయి కదా మళ్ళీ మీకు సో ఎన్నున్నా చూడండి మెటల్ ఆర్క్ వెల్డింగ్ కార్బన్ ఆర్క్ వెల్డింగ్ అటామిక్ హైడ్రోజన్ వెల్డింగ్ హీలి ఆర్క్ వెల్డింగ్ సో ఇలా ఉన్నాయి కదా సో ఆ వెల్డింగ్స్లో కూడా మీకు ఎటువంటి టైప్స్ ఉన్నాయి ఆ టైప్స్ మీరు తీసుకోవాలి ఓకేనా వాటి క్లాసిఫికేషన్స్ వాటి అప్లికేషన్స్ చాలా ఉంటాయి అప్లికేషన్స్ ఓకేనా సో మనం ఒకసారి టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ ఒకసారి ఓపెన్ చేసామంటే ఆ అప్లికేషన్స్ అన్నీ ఒకసారి ఒక క్లియర్ కట్ పేజ్ పేజీలో రాసి పెట్టుకుంటే సరిపోతుంది అనమాట అర్థమవుతుందా సో నేను కొద్ది పాయింట్స్ ఇచ్చాను ఇక్కడ ఒక వన్ అవర్ సెషన్లో ఎంత వివగలుగుతామో అంతవరకు ఇచ్చామన్నమాట అర్థమవుతుందా నెక్స్ట్ సో దీ ఆర్ ద అప్లికేషన్స్ ఈ అప్లికేషన్స్ అప్లికేషన్స్ అంతేనా ఇవి రెసిస్టెన్స్ వెల్డింగ్ అప్లికేషన్స్ రైట్ సో ఎక్కడెక్కడ సో అప్లికేషన్స్ మీకు ప్రీవియస్లో అడిగిన అప్లికేషన్ ఏది ఉందా అంటే ఇంతకుముందు సో సో రెఫ్రి ఎయిర్ క్రాఫ్ట్ ట్యాంక్స్లో ఎయిర్ క్రాఫ్ట్ ట్యాంక్స్లో సో విచ్ టైప్ ఆఫ్ వెల్డింగ్ వీ కెన్ యూస్ అనే క్వశ్చన్ ప్రీవియస్గా రిపీట్ అయింది ఓకేనా సో కాబట్టి ఆ క్వశ్చన్ కాకుండా మిగిలిన క్వశ్చన్స్ మనం ఎక్స్పెక్ట్ చేయొచ్చు సో ఏమో చెప్పలేము సేమ్ క్వశ్చన్ కూడా ఎక్స్పెక్ట్ చేయొచ్చు రైట్ స్టూడెంట్స్ సో నెక్స్ట్ ద డిఫరెన్సెస్ బిట్వీన్ రెసిస్టెన్స్ వెల్డింగ్ అండ్ ఆర్క్ వెల్డింగ్ రైట్ సో ఇక్కడ కూడా మీరు ఎక్కువగా కాన్సన్ట్రేట్ చేయాల్సి వస్తుంది అర్థమవుతుందా నెక్స్ట్ సో ద లాస్ ఆఫ్ ఎలిమినేషన్ మీద రైట్ సో దీస్ ఆర్ ద యూనిట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎలిమినేషన్ యూనిట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎలిమినేషన్ సో గుర్తుపెట్టుకోండి అమ్మా యూనిట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎలిమినేషన్ చాలా చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ సో మీరు ఒక క్వశ్చన్ ఖచ్చితంగా ఎక్స్పెక్ట్ చేయొచ్చు యూనిట్స్ ఆఫ్ ఎలిమినేషన్ నుంచి నెక్స్ట్ ఈ సో బల్బ్స్ వేవ్ లెన్స్ అండ్ సెన్సిటివిటీ వేరియేషన్ ఓకేనా సో ఏ కలర్ ఓకేనా సో హయ్యెస్ట్ వేవ్ లెంత్ ఉంటుంది లీస్ట్ వేవ్ లెంత్ అవంతా నెక్స్ట్ బల్బ్స్ ఏ బల్బ్ ఏ కలర్లో గ్లో అవుతుంది ఓకేనా ఏ బల్బ్ ఏ కలర్లో గ్లో అవుతుంది కూడా ఆ టేబుల్ కూడా గుర్తుపెట్టుకోవాలి ఓకేనా సో మెర్క్యూరీ వేపర్ ల్యాంప్ ఆ బల్బ్ ఏ గ్లోలో ఉంటుంది ఓకేనా సోడియం వేపర్ ల్యాంప్ ఏ గ్లోలో ఉంటుంది సో ఆ బల్బ్ కలర్స్ కూడా చాలా చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ అవన్నీ ఒక టేబుల్ ఫామ్ చేసి వేసుకోండి మీరు ఎప్పుడైతే టేబుల్స్ ఫామ్ చేసుకుంటారో చాలా రివిజన్ అనేది చాలా ఈజీ అవుతుంది ఎగ్జామ్కి ముందర ప్రతిసారి ఎగ్జామ్కి ముందర ముందర మీరు ఆ టెక్స్ట్ బుక్ మొత్తం రివైజ్ చేయాలంటే చాలా టఫ్ అవుతుంది అర్థమవుతుందా అందువల్ల సో ఒక ఒక టేబుల్ కొద్దిగా ఒక వన్ అవర్ టైం స్పెండ్ చేసి సో వాటికి ఒక టేబుల్ ఫామ్ చేసుకున్నారంటే మీకు చాలా ఈజీ అవుతుంది అర్థమవుతుందా నెక్స్ట్ సో వాటి అప్లికేషన్స్ నేను ఆ డిశ్చార్జ్ ల్యాంప్ ఇలా అప్లికేషన్స్ నుంచి కూడా మీకు సినిమా ప్రొజెక్టర్లో ఏ ల్యాంప్ వాడతారు అనేది ప్రీవియస్ క్వశ్చన్ ఓకేనా సో అవి చాలా చాలా ఇంపార్టెంట్ అప్లికేషన్స్ అర్థమవుతుందా ల్యాంప్స్ వాటి అప్లికేషన్స్ అలాంగ్ విత్ కలర్స్ కూడా చదువుకోండి క్లియర్ స్టూడెంట్స్ నెక్స్ట్ సో ట్రాక్షన్ సో ట్రాక్షన్లోంచి మీకు మీకు స్పీడ్ టైం కర్వ్ గురించి అడగచ్చు నెక్స్ట్ ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ కూడా అడగచ్చు ప్రాబ్లమ్స్ కూడా అడగచ్చు అర్థమవుతుందా సో దీస్ ఆర్ ద క్వశ్చన్స్ వీఆర్ హ్యావింగ్ స్టూడెంట్స్ సో ఫర్ టుడే సెషన్ ఫర్ టుడే సెషన్ సో విల్ మీట్ ఇన్ ద నెక్స్ట్ సెషన్ రైట్ స్టూడెంట్స్